Hi everyone, welcome to part two of our choice block tutorial video. To recap what we went over in part one, we went into a deep dive on the choice block, which allows users to make choices within projects. And then we went over intents and utterances, which help us understand what the user is trying to accomplish. Now for part two of this tutorial, we're first going to go over slots. Slots can be thought of as particular pieces of information that you have told the assistant to look for when the user is giving their response. And then we're going to learn about VoiceFlow's Interaction Model Manager, which introduces an easier way to manage your project's intents, slots, and variables. Okay, great. Let's get started. So here we are back on the VoiceFlow canvas, and to make things nice and easy, I'm going to use the same project that we created in part one. Now our project is looking pretty good, but you might be wondering, well, the user can't really order a pizza by only saying, hey, can I order a pizza? They need to give us at least the type of pizza, so pepperoni, cheese, pineapple, and the size of the pizza that they want, small, medium, or large. And this is where slots come in. To help you understand slots, let's explain what they are and how they work. Slots can be thought of as particular pieces of information that you have told the assistant to look for when the user is giving their response. They act like traditional form fields in the sense that they can be optional or required depending on what's needed to complete the request. For example, in the utterance, order me a large mocha coffee, we want our assistant to look out for the coffee size and type. These are the slots we are looking to capture from the user's utterance. So if we use the above utterance, for example, we would assign a size slot to capture large and a type slot to capture mocha. Now slots can be a bit complicated to understand in theory. So let's jump back into voice flow to show you how you can use them in your project. So let's go ahead and implement slots within our project so that we can get the user to give us the type of pizza they want, the size of pizza they want, and then we can go ahead and confirm it for them. So if we open up our order pizza intent and we open this up in the choice block here, under utterances, we can go ahead and add a new utterance along with any accompanying slots. So I can say, I want to order a and if you can say this in your head, this is where you would probably say, I want to order a large pepperoni pizza. That's how a person would probably say that. And so when we're building our utterance, we want to think to ourselves, okay, but how would the user likely say this? And where would they give us these pieces of information? This is vital in determining where we place our slots. So in this case, the user would say, I want to order a large, so I'm going to go ahead and type in size in parentheses, which is going to be our slot type. This is the piece of information looking for the size of the pizza, and we're going to put this right here. So let's go ahead and hit size and create. Now the reason we hit create is because there aren't any existing slots to choose from since we haven't created any. Otherwise you could always choose from a list. But now we have this modal because we're creating it for the first time. Now very similarly to intents, you'll see that if we go into slot type, we have a bunch of different examples given to us by Alexa and Google. And the reason for this is, for example, if we were looking for a number, so for example, right here, it wouldn't really make sense for us to have to type in millions and millions of different sample values for Alexa or Google to look for. So in this case, Alexa and Google are going to give us a slot type for number. And that's just going to make it really easy for us in the sense that if we were looking for a number, this predefined slot would quickly pick up any time the user gives us a number within that particular section of the utterance. However, for the case of size, we are looking for small, medium, and large, as this is relating to pizza. Now, there aren't any slot types given to us that deal with small, medium, and large, and so we're going to have to build our own. So we can go over to Custom, and then here we are going to put in the slot value for small, and another for medium, and another for large. Then we can add some synonyms. And so these are different things the user might say to indicate small, medium, or large. So for small, they might say tiny. For medium, maybe they say mid-sized. And for large, they might say something like extra large. And maybe we don't even have that size. So if they say extra large, we'll just get them a large. Now at the bottom, we have slot color. And this is purely aesthetic, just to manage our project better but we're going to choose this color and hit create slot. In our utterance, you'll see that we have the slot there and this is where the user would now say, I want to order a large. This of course would fulfill the slot for size because we added large as a slot type. 
From here, the user will probably want to give us the type of pizza. So let's go ahead and open up a parentheses to create a new slot, and let's put in type. You can see there, because we just created size, it's in our available list. However, we need to create a new slot for type, so we are going to do the same thing that we did for size, in that we're going to create a custom slot, as there's likely no slot for pizza type. So I'm going to put in slot values for pepperoni, and I'm going to put another one in for cheese, and this time we're not going to use any slot synonyms, and we're going to hit create. And looking back at our utterance, we might want to tweak it again, so it says I want to order a large pepperoni pizza, so we'll add pizza at the end, and we'll lock that in. So now we have an utterance where if the user was to say I want to order a large cheese pizza, we would be able to capture these slot values within the slots, where we can then confirm them back to the user. Now, when you're building your own project, you're going to want to add a bunch of different variations of this utterance. So, you might want to say, order a size type pizza. The user might just say size type pizza. And so, as I mentioned, you'll want to add in the different variations of what the user might say in this particular scenario. So now, we can go ahead and in our success state here, so in our speak block, we can actually say, great, I have ordered you a size. So we can open up the parentheses here, and we can type in size, the same thing for type, pizza. Great. And so you'll actually see in the list here, so for example, we have size, type, sessions, user ID. These are all variables, and we'll get into these in a later video. However, all you need to know is that for the purpose of voice flow, we equate slots to variables. And so you can always capture a value within a slot, and then play it back within the speak block by using the parentheses and choosing it from the list. Okay, awesome. So now let's go ahead and go to the top left and actually try out our skill. So I'm going to hit prototype, and then hit start test. Welcome to VoiceFlow Pizza. How can we help you today? And we're going to say, I want to order a large cheese pizza. Great. I have ordered you a large cheese pizza. Fantastic. And so we can see we actually had our confirm message there, we pulled out the different slots from our utterance, and we went ahead and sent the message back to the user. This is how you can use slots to create a much more personalized Alexa experience. And this will allow you to, if this was a real pizza app, send this information to your API to place a real purchase order. However, that's a topic for another video. Okay, let's go ahead and show you how to manage all of your intents and slots from one easy place. Now our skill's looking great, and we're using a variety of utterances, slots, and intents to create a more personalized project. However, you might find that if you have more than two intents, let's say you have 10 or maybe even 100, it can get really hard to manage all of the different utterances and slots within your project. This is where the Interaction Model Manager comes into play in VoiceFlow. If you haven't heard the term Interaction Model, it is essentially the fabric of different intents that make up an Alexa skill or Google Action. Now, we can access the interaction model by going to the bottom left and clicking on this button right here. And this brings up all of our available intents, slots, and variables. And so, for example, here you can see we have the order pizza intent. We have a variety of our different utterances, and we can also see the slots that we're using. And if we click back on intents, we can see the cancel order intent that we created in the last video and the different utterances associated with it. And so this is a really easy way for us to quickly make changes to our interaction model without having to find the exact block where the order pizza intent is being used. For bigger projects, this can save you a great deal of time. It's a huge advantage to have all of your intents, slots, and variables in one place. Now you might be wondering, why would we want to have something like this? Why do we care about this interaction model manager and how we can save all of our intents and slots in one place? And a big reason for this is because intents are reusable. So for example, after we say, great, I have ordered you a size type pizza, we can ask the user another question. So we'll drag our speak block out 
We'll click on it here and say, is there any other way I can help? And the user now has a choice. So let's pull in a choice block. And we can actually reuse the cancel order intent we created previously. And so you'll see right there, the cancel order intent with all of its available utterances is now ready to be reused again. And so you can imagine if you have a really large project where you're reusing multiple different intents, you wouldn't want to have to go and update the cancel order intent, both in this block as well as this block. And so that's where the interaction model manager allows you to have everything in one place and you can interact with all of your intents from one simple manager, making it really easy to create highly personalized experiences without increasing the maintenance overhead you have. And that's it. To recap this tutorial, we defined slots and how to use them, and then we showed you VoiceFlow's interaction model manager so you can build more efficiently while keeping your intent slots and variables nice and organized. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next VoiceFlow tutorial.